What's going on guys, my name is Anthony and welcome back to your second tutorial in the basics of Java game development. So last tutorial I basically just created a little frame and yeah so you can move it around, minimize it, close it and it has the little title up there in the corner. So in this tutorial I'm actually going to be teaching you guys how to display something in that frame instead of just having a big old gray box in there. So to do that, we're going to be actually creating another class and we're going to be adding one line of code into our already pre-existing class. So to do this, right click on the package here and hit new Java class. <clears throat> and we're going to call this one um, contents. So this is going to be the actual contents that's within our JFrame. We should capitalize C because that's just good programming practice. So now that we've done that, we're actually going to extend another class in this contents class. Why did everything just go dark on me? Huh, the comments actually just went dark. That's weird. Anyways, so we're going to extend another class and this one is going to be extends j panel this time. Now, the way I think of uh, Java's kind of interface to creating a game is this outermost perimeter of every window that you have in any program such as NetBeans is your JFrame. Now the inside here as you can see it's got our toolbar, some icons, place to type, um, a little display window for a console, our project manager. All that is the content that is encapsulated within our JFrame. So our contents class actually extends a class called JPanel which houses all of our content. So to do that we just got to import the JPanel class and that's in javax.swing.jpanel so it's in the same package directory as jframe and then after we do that in order to tell our jframe that we want to access our jpanel we actually have to write one line of code in here called super dot add and then you're going to want to call the constructor of the contents class and go new contents end it with a semicolon and now we've basically specified we want all the contents to go into our JFrame but right now we don't have much of anything to display so to display something we're going to create a little constructor public contents and then let's put our curly braces down and now just for good programming practice we're going to be um, setting this to double buffered graphics now for those of you who don't know about double buffered graphics uh, I would go Google it, but all in all, it's basically a way of displaying um, animations in a more smooth manner so it doesn't look as choppy. So to set double buffered graphics, we go super dot set double buffered, and then we just want the parameter to be true. Now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to call an actual method that allows us to paint objects paint images to our actual screen so to do this we're going to go public paint public void paint component now make sure you spell this right or else it won't actually work and um yeah so it's p lowercase p a i n t and then a capital c and then obviously you know how to spell component and then in the parameters we actually have one parameter called graphics g now as you type this you'll notice there's a little bulb that pops up and paint component starts to get underlined with yellow now this is because we're actually overriding a method from another class so to do this we just got to go add an import for java.awt.graphics which is just importing the graphics uh, library that allows us to paint <clears throat> so import that and you'll still get a little yellow bulb just add an at override annotation Basically, this says that we have overridden this method from another class. Um, so yeah, that's all that means. <clears throat> and then in here, we can actually paint stuff to our screen. Now, what I usually do is actually use a different um, class for painting just because it gives you a little more options. We're going to be using the graphics 2D uh, library to actually paint. So create a graphics 2D object called G2D, set it equal to um, graphics so this is casting here so graphics and then we put G which is the uh, the variable that we created up in the parameter so this basically just uh, casts the G object 
or the graphics object into a graphics 2D object. Then make sure you add the import for graphics 2D. Now, if you don't understand that, you don't really. What did I do wrong? Huh. Oh, my bad. We're supposed to cast it to graphics 2D. That was my mistake. So, if you guys don't really understand that, all you have to do is copy and paste this into your code every time that you do it. Um, but you could even use it the gra graphics G object without doing this line of code, but I just prefer the 2D library. So after this, we're going to actually start by creating um, a square on our screen. So this is just a basic little, uh, um, little graphics that we're going to put onto our screen. So to do this, all we have to do is go G2D and use our dot separator, and we're going to go draw rect. Now the draw rect uh, method has four parameters. The first one is our X location in pixels, so I'll put it at 50. And then the second parameter is our Y location in pixels, so I'll put it at 100. And then the third parameter is our width of our rectangle, uh, we'll do as 200. And then the height we could do as, I don't know, let's do 140. So now that we've specified that, when we run our program, as long as I didn't mess something up and embarrass myself, it should show a rectangle. Um, in our screen. So let's see if it worked. As you can see, it has worked. I didn't actually try this beforehand to make sure I don't make a fool of myself, but it worked. So we just have a frame with a rectangle drawn in it. As you can see, it's just an outline of a rectangle. Now, if we wanted this rectangle to be filled, all we have to do instead of draw rect, we could actually change this method to fill rect. So it's not much of a change, but it'll actually change the Oh, the actual look of our rectangle. Hit run. Now we have, um, I think that's a gray or a black shaded rectangle. So there you go. We could actually draw multiple things to the screen. So let's draw another rectangle. G2D dot. This time I'll draw the rect. <coughs> draw a rect. And I'm going to set it to. <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to set it to 300 pixels to the, uh, in the x-axis and 300 in the y and then a width of 50 and a height of 50 so this will be actually a square <clears throat> if we run this now there we go we have two things drawn on the screen and yeah so that's pretty cool uh, so that's it for this tutorial that's all I'm gonna do and in the next tutorial I'm gonna be teaching you guys a few more methods on how to like draw some circles I'm sure you guys can figure it out on your own but I'll just do it anyways and I'll teach you guys how to change the colors around and stuff like that so if you enjoyed this video make sure you uh, comment rate and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial